Hi. So, uh, the Swapper. I keep wanting to call it the Watcher. I don't know why. Anyway, the Swapper, this is an interesting one. It's a puzzle game, a bit like Limbo and, uh, Limbo and, uh, other <laughs> puzzle games that I'm sure I've played. Braid? What was that? Bastion? No, Braid was a puzzler too, right? It's similar to that. You'll see. just woken up and I've got some coffee. I put this video together last night, um, but then decided to go to bed. And there's a new series of burn notice, which is exciting to replace Game of Thrones. Anyway, I digress. This game was made entirely with stop motion, using um, little clay figures that are animated painstakingly by hand, I think. It's something to do with stop motion, anyway. Um, but it looks like nothing else. It's super intriguing. I read a review that was a bit up its own bottom, saying, The closer you look, the more the realism of the game eludes you, and this stretches through to the concept itself affecting your mind. I don't know. All I do know is that um, it does look pretty amazing. However, our uh, escape pod has crashed on this strange planet, unfortunately. And I cut it there because I was standing there for about 20 minutes. I think I got a phone call. But you'll see here. There we go. A and D. Unfortunately, no... Um, uh, gamepad support, which really annoyed me at first, but made sense later on. Because you're going to be using the mouse to place your uh, puzzle solutions, and you'll see what they are too. You can use the mouse to aim the light, but there's nowhere really ever dark enough to need uh, justification of the light. Oh yeah, sound effects, pretty standard. Zoop. I didn't know what that light did. It appeared to do nothing. So there's a lift. That's how they work. And then we're through to Site 24. Now entering Theseus Excavation Site 24 on Planet Cori 5. All off-world transport via home teleport at base of installation. All finds property of the Sisyphus Project. This is a bit of background story. Not a lot, but a bit. Um, having a look at the map here reveals that this room is sort of a dead end. Or, well, uh, I guess it's the outside world. Right, so we've got a map that comes up. I overuse it a lot. Woo! Excuse me. Coffee hasn't kicked in yet, still yawning. Uh, and then there are green rooms to explore on the map, so I'm going to check out one of them first, uh, randomly. There we go, so heading down here. And there's some neato parallax going on, but that makes it hard to tell what you can put uh, people on. There we go, try holding and releasing the right mouse button. So we can create up to four copies of ourselves. Now what's interesting about these copies is that, well, as you'll see, I thought they'd stand still, but they actually move exactly the same as you. They are... Clones. Yeah, I don't... I mean, they're clones. That much is evident. I just, I don't exactly know how to describe them beyond that. They'll jump when you jump, they'll move when you move. Um... And you can walk into a wall, or they can walk into a wall, and if you walk into a wall, they'll keep moving if they have room. Um, there, you can see me fiddling around with the concept there. And I'll start speeding up the transitions between the rooms shortly, but I thought you might want to see this. There we go. Pretty straightforward, a bit of a jump there. 
and then push that button and we'll build this little gap. There. F four clones can exist at the same time. Pretty simple room. There we go. And then when you pass through each room or one of those lights, all the clones disappear and you get them back. Or you can walk a clone into that light and it will kill it. Or you can touch a clone and it will kill it. Um, but you can't just take one back, which is kind Radio of annoying. And caused me. Location. Mine Science Laboratory, Space Station CCS. What you're telling me isn't possible. <laughs> Tell me who I just ejected into space. There's also a bit of micro lag. You may have seen there the game uh, pauses occasionally while it's loading. This could have been because I'd had the computer on for about a week before rebooting. Oh, also falls will kill you, which is nice to know, and your clothes. Um, so I ended up just going through there instead. But yeah, there's a little bit, so after I rebooted it sort of sorted itself out because um, I was playing Remember Me and got glitches at the front end too. But now we've got a second uh, ability and that's to transfer yourself into any of the clones that you make, which is going to be useful. So you'll see here, not there, that's kind of pointless, but across here, eventually I get there, there we go. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, no, so I was playing Remember Me and it was micro stuttering too, like just uh, pausing every so often and I rebooted and installed, there was a new driver available and all that good stuff too. And so I installed that and um, they fixed it, but I wish I'd done it before this. Anyway, red light blacks sw blocks swap arrays. So I can put a man up there, but I can't possess him through the red. Uh, what I can do is walk him onto that platform. Um, there, there we go. And then fire someone up there and become them. And then head over that gap there. There we go. And there's all these um, weird logs hidden around as well. I'll let those play out in case you've got interest in reading them, but I kind of gave up after two or three. Why not? Pop down here. And I have this habit of always looking at the map. There is an out of function teleporter, and we need one encryption orb to fire it up. So let's go the only way we can this way. Probably reload this and read through all those messages. There might have been some interesting ones. You can't make me do that. I won't do it. But I like this game. It, it proposes some. Oh, I can't turn into red. It's, it proposes some interesting conundrums. Um, in that. There we go. Come on, I can work it out. Yes, there it is. It proposes some interesting conundrums in that, you know, the um, the concept of who are you, really, which I quite like. It's like, if I could create an exact clone and transfer my consciousness into that clone and destroy the original, am I still me? I mean, that technically that's what teleporting is, right? Um, with quantum pairing. So, I don't know. If you're interested in that sort of premise, I had a flatmate who once asked me, would you use a teleporter unconditionally? And I said, yep. And he said, okay, you walk into a room and go behind a screen. And a couple of seconds later, you're on the other side of the room looking back at the screen. And it's amazing. Do you want to do it again? And I'm like, sure. He said, well, now you go in and they take the screen away and you're teleported and you look back at the screen and on the other side, you see a copy of yourself or the original copy, the one that was teleported, being cut up and diced into lots of little bits so that there isn't uh, two of you existing at the same time. How do you feel now? I'm like, well, I'm still, you know, I'm still alive. Uh, but it is, it's, I mean, ultimately, I'm. he's saying you're going to be killing yourself, because you are, because the copy of you isn't you. Anyway, and it's early and I haven't had coffee and I'm probably not expressing myself properly. You've got these uh, rocks which talk to you. 
And it turns out they've sort of infected the human mind or something. I'm, it's not really clear why or how. I think people have basically just got nuts with this swapper technology and it's not the rocks at all. Offside you never know. know. I don't, I'm awful at paying attention to computer game stories. Which is one of the reasons I don't really do playthrough videos, because most of the time I don't know what's going on myself. So to try and impart that knowledge to other people is tough. Anyway, here we go. Up here to the next room. There's more rocks floating around. I think this room is uh, just a dead end with three rocks in it. I like that one. What is where? How is where? Does where tick? So I guess they inhabit, I don't know, hyperspace, whatever. Um, where they're able to link their minds in a chain, somehow. Uh, there's also an encryption orb up there, I don't know why. I'm not just... Oh, the blue. Okay, the blue prevents you creating someone in it. The red prevents you swapping. So let's walk forward here. This guy will fall off the side. Oh, lordy. Took me a while to get there. There we go, walk forward. That guy will fall off the sup. No? Yes? There, and then possess him. That second guy was a bit redundant, but there we go. There is another encryption cube. So now that's open. So that's nice. Quarantine disengaged. Quarantine disengaged. So now we've got uh, somewhere a little tougher. You'll see here. Uh, it's just there's a bit of a drop down here that you die on if you go all the way down, so you have to uh, transfer to someone else midair so your original guy dies. It's a little harsh. And here's log number five. Seems like I missed log number four somewhere. There it is up the top. So those are teleporters, we'll find out later. And there's an encryption orb there that needs interacting with. But first of all, let's head down this way. Now I noticed um, that there are these sort of weird upward vents, but you can't actually use them yet. So we're going to go into here instead. And it took me four or five goes to get this, so I've cut ahead to the actual solution there. So I worked out quite quickly that you have to transfer into him. What I didn't work out, in fact straight away I think I did, but what I didn't work out is that you then have to, once you're him, drop another guy into that hole. And then getting up is an interesting challenge too, because basically you fire a copy of yourself, and then fire the, uh, and then become you. Let's see. Um, but time slows down when you are holding your beam to become, or to decide where to fire your clone. And you'll see here, I can climb up here now. There, see? So now heights aren't... Well, I mean, I could always climb up there. It's just that other room showed me how. This is a bit of a tricky one. So you basically go here. There. And I wasn't sure if I could fall down into that stuff below, if it was spiky or what. I don't really know. So now I'll speed this up, because uh, you get the general idea despite the fact it's quite peaceful. There we go, so you just put a guy there and grab that. Because those doors were opening in tandem, or rather one was closing, one was opening. They kind of been open together. Anyway, heading back this way. Still nothing up there. I think that's actually a route in for the teleporter later, but we won't worry too much about that. And then for some reason I decided the lift wasn't worthy. And then I wanted to have a look up here at the greenhouse. There we go. Before I went through and activated that thing. So off this way. It's kind of pretty. There we go. We're going to have two rooms up here. We're going to go to the top one first. I actually couldn't solve this the first time. I went down and solved the bottom one and then came back to the top one. But using the magic of movie editing, you'll not even notice the break. Nothing up there either. Right 
Did you notice the break? The beautiful seamless cut? Anyway, there's a button there that gets rid of one red light, and another button there which gets rid of another one, and I don't know why this took me so long to work out, but you basically place two guys there to become him, and then you just send a guy up there. There we go. And there is your delicious um, acquisition hall, whatever it's called. And then in here, there we look, that was a cut. That one was a little easier to notice. <laughs> So you create a guy down there, then another one up top. Once there's a guy, you see at the bottom on that button there. And you've got to get someone on the button first to get rid of the blue light. This is a bit of a tricky one, but not the other one. Anyway, that's pretty straightforward. And then it's just a mad dash back to the original area. And you can see the uh, encryption orb thing is now clear, and I can activate that, and that's going to put these teleporting things up, which is very exciting. Anyway, I'll leave the walkthrough there for the time being. That's about 15 minutes, 16 and a bit. Uh, on the left is Monaco. Don't know if you've seen that game. Quite a lot of fun. Uh, there's a playthrough of the first three levels. It gets a bit more complicated after that. I probably need to go back to that at some point and finish it up. Anyway, on the right is part two. You can see uh, there. And I'm watching, I was I put this 30 second clip in and I ended up mesmerized by this teleporter thing. I don't know if you will be too, but I will get the second video up later today. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Bye.